Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Sound Bites. In today's module, we're going to focus in specifically on the use of bedside ultrasound for the paracentesis procedure. Now, the use of bedside ultrasound for paracentesis can actually lower your complication rate and allow you to know who is a better candidate for the actual procedure. So, step number one when you're deciding if a paracentesis procedure is necessary is to determine if the patient actually has ascites and if there's significant areas of fluid pockets that are amenable to a drainage procedure. The second step is to best mark the location for the needle placement using bedside ultrasound. And the two techniques that have been used in the past are the midline linea alba or the lateral gutter techniques. And using bedside ultrasound can allow you to decide between the two where is the best location for the needle placement. This illustration shows the preferred positions for the paracentesis procedure. The key concept here is to avoid the epigastric vessels during the puncture attempt. Note the location of the epigastric vessels just lateral to midline on the abdominal wall. So we want to use that 3 MHz probe and we can place the probe as shown in positions 1 and 2 in the traditional lateral gutter approaches for the paracentesis procedure. This would be above the anterior superior iliac crest and we can look for fluid within the lateral gutters and plan for a puncture attempt in either of these positions. We can also place the probe in probe position 3 as shown in the midline linea alba position. We'd want to place the probe below the umbilicus in the midline in the relatively avascular midline linea alba position. Now we can also use the 10 MHz higher frequency probe to get a better look at the abdominal wall in relation to the bowel and the ascites fluid prior to our puncture attempt. In fact, this will give us a more detailed look into the abdominal cavity to better plan our approach for the paracentesis procedure. Here's the location of the probe to the lateral position for the paracentesis procedure. Note the placement of the high frequency linear array probe above the anterior superior iliac crest along the lateral gutters of the patient. Notice here the location of the epigastric vessels in relation to the lateral gutters, and we want to avoid those epigastrics during any puncture attempt. Notice also the location of the bladder, and we want to make sure that we decompress the bladder prior to any puncture attempt for a paracentesis. But we can see here that the probe is safely lateral to most of these structures, thus a paracentesis can be safely performed from this position on the abdominal wall. This video clip shows a small amount of ascites as taken with a 3 MHz probe. And we can see here a small amount of ascites is denoted by that darker anechoic fluid collection. And we can see the intestine with anchoring mesentery swaying back and forth within the ascites as the patient breathes. And this is known as gut sliding. And it makes the intestine look almost like palm trees swaying back and forth within a breeze. So from this location, it might be unsafe to perform a paracentesis as it could be difficult to get a needle in between the areas of intestine without puncturing through an area of intestine or mesentery. This video shows a moderate amount of ascites, again taken with a 3 MHz probe. And we note the intestine with anchoring mesentery sliding back and forth as the patient breathes. And we see a large collection of ascites, that darker anechoic fluid collection, anterior to the intestine. So this might be a good location to perform a paracentesis as we could place the needle safely into that ascites without going through into the intestine or anchoring mesentery. This video clip emphasizes the point that using a higher frequency 10 MHz probe on the abdominal wall gives a more detailed exam of the evaluation of the ascites in relation to the intestine. And we see the abdominal wall anteriorly, and we can see the bowel floating within the ascites. Here we can actually mark down and measure the safety zone for in which a needle could safely go through the abdominal wall into the ascites without hitting bowel. Note here, the safety zone is approximately 2 centimeters as marked out with a centimeter dot towards the right of the image. Another benefit of using the higher frequency probe prior to a paracentesis procedure is to investigate the depth of the abdominal wall, as a thick abdominal wall can frustrate attempts at a paracentesis procedure. Here we see the depth of the abdominal wall, which measures 2.5 centimeters anteriorly, and we can see the line, which is the peritoneal lining there, just deep to the abdominal wall. Note the presence here of ascites, the dark fluid collection, just deep to the peritoneal lining, and we can see the gut sliding or bowel moving back and forth, deep within the ascites. Note the two centimeter safety zone for placement of the needle into the ascites fluid, but note here we'd need to use a longer needle, a needle longer than 2.5 centimeters, just to get through the abdominal wall to get fluid from the abdominal cavity. 
In this video clip, we've moved the probe slightly lateral from the last position in the same patient. Again, we note the deep abdominal wall at 2.5 centimeters, denoting that a longer needle will be needed to get the ascites fluid. But here we see a large collection of ascites, and note here the absence of gut sliding, denoting a larger pocket of ascites and a more favorable position for the paracentesis procedure. So this is actually the position in which we perform the paracentesis using a longer lumbar puncture needle, and we're safely able to get a paracentesis is done and get the ascites fluid out for evaluation in the lab. In this video clip, we'll re-emphasize the surface anatomy for the lateral abdominal position for paracentesis. Note we're coming with a capped needle underneath the 10 MHz probe at the lateral puncture point. This would be the preferred position for the lateral approach for paracentesis as shown by the black star. Now some of the surface anatomy that we can palpate includes the iliac crest, and note here we're about 4 to 5 centimeters above the iliac crest there. We also want to avoid those all-important epigastric vessels, which we can see medial to the puncture point from the lateral paracentesis approach. Using ultrasound guidance, we can map out the best position on the abdominal wall for the paracentesis approach and go either right or left side depending on the maximal a pocket of ascites present. We also want to ascertain the relative locations of the liver and spleen so as to avoid iatrogenic injury to a solid organ. And as we emphasized earlier in the video clips, we want to look for that intestine with anchoring mesentery so as to avoid intestinal puncture during the procedure. While the lateral gutter approach to paracentesis is commonly emphasized during medical training, the midline linea alba position can be a great location for a paracentesis procedure. Note here, the probe is placed along the midline linea alba with a marker dot towards the patient's head, and we see it placed along the midline, just inferior to the umbilicus. Here we'll further investigate the midline linea alba position for the paracentesis procedure. Note the high frequency probe placed along the midline linea alba and we're coming with a cap needle at a 45 degree angle underneath the probe looking for the ring down artifact onto a suitable pocket of ascites. Here's a different viewpoint from the same midline linea alba position, again replacing that probe along the midline, and this would be about the appropriate position for the paracentesis procedure. And here we just place the needle right there, directly inferior to the umbilicus. And I'll indicate that with a black star. Note here, we'd be coming through the relatively avascular midline linea alba. But recall that it's very, very important from this position to not to puncture through the bladder. And we can see the relative location of the bladder in relation to the puncture point. So we must have the patient void or place a Foley catheter prior to attempting a paracentesis from the midline linea alba position. Here's a video clip from the midline linea alba taken with a 3 MHz probe. I have the probe oriented towards the patient's head, so the superior aspect is towards the left and inferior is towards the right. Note here, we see the bowel superiorly moving up and down within the ascites fluid, which we see in the middle of the image here. And note the bladder, relatively large, towards the inferior aspect of the image here. Now we can see that this would be a pocket amenable to paracentesis, but recall again to increase the safety of the procedure from the midline linea alba approach, we'd want to drain the bladder prior to a puncture attempt. Here's a video clip taken from the same patient after having him completely void, and note now we have the decompressed bladder, making the ascites pocket much larger and more amenable to a paracentesis puncture from that midline linea alba technique. And we can see here now the pocket of ascites as denoted by the darker anechoic fluid collection between the bowel superior and the decompressed bladder inferiorly. In this video clip, we can see how using the higher frequency 10 MHz probe can allow real-time guidance of the needle down into the ascites pocket. And we see the detection of the needle coming in from left to right through the abdominal wall with the tip of the needle safely parked within the ascites fluid. Notice here that the bowel is distant to the tip of the needle, thereby we can minimize any puncture through the bowel during the paracentesis procedure. We need to put a sterile sheath over the probe during this procedure. So in conclusion, thanks for tuning in for ultrasound guidance of paracentesis. Ultrasound guidance for this procedure can potentially make the paracentesis procedure a safer one for our patients, and using a combination of both the 3 and 10 MHz probes can fully evaluate the ascites prior to a procedure. We can use either one of two techniques, either the static technique, we position the patient and then mark off the puncture spot with ultrasound prior to a procedure, or we can actually use a dynamic technique where we place the probe in a sterile sheath and watch the needle in real time go through the abdominal wall into the ascites fluid. Either of these techniques can potentially decrease your complication rate, so I hope in the future you'll consider ultrasound guidance for paracentesis during your next paracentesis procedure.